Hi, my name is Glenn Morley. I'm a senior consultant at BSM Consulting in the Medical Aesthetic Division. And today I'm joined by Katrina Whitehair, my colleague in medical aesthetics. And we're going to be talking about accountability leadership. This is a topic that we discuss with clients, every client, all the time. <laughs> and um, we're going to sort of deconstruct why it's so important in developing an accountable culture. So Katrina, can you share a little bit about your thoughts when it comes to articulating what accountability leadership is? What, how would you define accountability leadership? Yes, thank you, Glenn. So accountability leadership is like servant leadership. It's inclusive leadership. These managers and leaders seek to understand their teams. They include them in the decision making process and inadvertently they bake in accountability by including their teams, defining roles, defining responsibilities, observing their teams. So they become part of that decision-making pipeline. So they're included and we bake in accountability that way by leading by example and leading through these methods. Yeah. You know, it's amazing when I'm working with, um, with managers and there's a, a certain project that, um, that becomes a goal for the practice. It's amazing how different a team's perspective is if they are a part of decision making if you know they're brought in and you know a manager may have a completely fully baked idea of how this project should go but if they tell the team how the project will go versus inviting the team to you know give ideas let's have a brainstorming session and outline a plan together um, suddenly you have a team that's invested and they believe in the plan, plan because they feel like they're architects in the plan. So wouldn't you agree that it is? it just changes the dynamic? You may end up with the same plan, but the implementation of that plan and the possibility of engagement um, at a higher level increases exponentially. Have you experienced this yourself, Katrina? Absolutely, Glenn. In my role as an administrator, I was very much an inclusive leader and would include my team members through that process. Even if I knew in my mind where I wanted us to end up, I wanted them to be a part of the understanding and the why behind what we're doing and why we're doing it. You know, on the other end of the spectrum would be your top down managers. And these managers are more hands off and they do more of telling what we're doing, but not including the team in the why. So what happens is staff don't trust, they don't understand the process, and they feel like they're being micromanaged by these managers. So by including staff, we can avoid having this lack of trust on the team. Yeah. I um do you think that someone who has been trained as a top-down manager can rewire their own thinking and become an accountability manager or an inclusive manager? Yes, Glenn, 100%. We're talking about observation skills, active listening skills, talking about the why. You've already come to some conclusions about why the decisions you're making are good for the practice. So include your team, elevate them, educate them, and help your team members become leaders in their own right and understanding the how and why behind what we do in medical aesthetics. I couldn't agree more. You know, it's um, I often am asked um, to break it down a little bit and, help, you know, I'll, I'll hear from a manager help me understand what this looks like from an implementation standpoint. Um, and a, an example that I recently gave to a practice down in the Washington area um, related back to um, the usage or utilization of points. As you know, Ally and Aspire, and there probably are, are other reward systems and practices. These have become a really important value add for medical practices. And the, the way that this practice had approached it was to tell the front office that they were in charge, they were in charge of letting patients know that they had alley points or aspire points, but it wasn't working. And um, so 
they asked me to sort of look at the protocol. What's wrong with the protocol? And my response was, well, I'm happy to answer that question, but have you asked your team? Did you ask them, take it back to them and say, hey, our goal was to increase utilization, but it hasn't worked. Can you guys, can we troubleshoot this? Can we whiteboard it? Let's, any idea, all ideas. And it was really interesting because the protocol as written was uh, that the front desk was going to let patients know they had Aspire or Alley points at checkout. And the team said, you know, it doesn't make sense. If I'm a patient, I want to know when I check in that I have some money to spend. <laughs> and I don't know if it was the fact that they were bought into that or if it really did make a difference in a patient's mind. It probably was a little bit of both. But the end result, when everybody was on the same page and they had an idea they thought would work, guess what? It worked. And it has it has sort of set records um, in terms of redemptions. And so it's an, a quick and easy sort of example of why including teams in problem solving and revising protocols can really make a difference. You know what I mean? I do. I love that, Glenn. That's an excellent example. So what might be next steps for um, a practice that um, would like to learn more about inclusive leadership or accountability leadership? Sure. So we can talk about some traits of accountability leaders. Mm -hmm. um, these leaders are you know, in medical aesthetics, we are inadvertently, we're dependent on each other. We're on a continuum of care and activities within the practice. So these leaders become a part of their team. They help observe what's happening on the floor. They're part of that day-to-day. -day. They become enmeshed in the team. So they can start to see things more clearly that are happening in the practice and then help the team make decisions to do process improvements. So we can start to think about what traits do these people have? Uh, they're observers, they're honest, they are candid leaders, they are selfless. They're always thinking about the patient experience and about their teams. They're empathetic. Uh, these leaders have emotional maturity. They're very loyal and they're authentic. They genuinely care and are genuinely a part of those teams. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, you know, I think that there, everyone's a work in progress, including me. <laughs> and so I hope anyone that's tuned into um, this recording will feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we would love to work with you. We'd love to offer guidance. We have all kinds of resources and materials we'd love to share. So please reach out to us at BSM Consulting if we can help you create a more accountable culture in your practice. Thank you for tuning in.